in the far reaches of the Pacific Northwest, there is a place where hundreds of islands flow out of the forest green sea. A place where one of the world's most beautiful, powerful, and majestic creatures can be found. Orca, the killer whale. This is also a place where something insidious is happening. For several months a year, the southern resident orcas make the waters surrounding the San Juan and Gulf Islands their home. They come to these inland waters primarily to feed on salmon, who are returning from the open ocean to spawn. Orcas are toothed whales and are the largest member of the dolphin family, reaching lengths up to 32 feet and weighing over 9 tons. Their torpedo-shaped bodies are among the most efficient and hydrodynamic of all cetaceans, and with their powerful tail flukes, orcas can reach a top speed of over 30 miles per hour. Males are easily distinguished from females due to their pronounced dorsal fins, which reach up to six feet in height. Their distinctive black and white coloration is not only beautiful, but stealthy. Unsuspecting prey may never see them coming until it's too late. Orcas can also put on a spectacular display of behaviors, including head slapping, tail slapping, by hopping and reaching. Here in the Pacific Northwest, there are three southern resident pods or family groupings of orcas known respectively as J, K, and L pods. These family groups are highly developed and well defined. Orca society is matriarchal, meaning the eldest female is the center of the pod with up to four generations of her calves and their offspring living together for the duration of their lives, forging one of the strongest family bonds found in all of nature. Orcas live a lifespan similar to our own. Like humans, male orcas on average do not live as long as females, and female orcas go through something similar to menopause while in their 40s. Ruffles, or J1, easily identified by his ruffled dorsal fin, is currently the oldest living male orca and is estimated to be in his early 50s. The eldest female and matriarch of J-Pod is Granny, or J2, and she is over 80 years old. In 1995, there were a total of 99 resident orcas. Today, however, there has been a tragic decline with nearly 25% of the population dying in the last six years. What is causing this crisis? Although these inland waters on the surface seem quite pristine and undisturbed, nothing could be further from the truth. For surrounding what appears to be untarnished wilderness is our modern civilization with all that that imposes. We are polluting the air, the land, and the sea with PCBs, DDT, and dioxins. These poisons are entering the food chain, finding their way up from small fish to larger fish, and finally to orcas. The orcas who live here, by no choice of their own, have become urban whales and are the most contaminated whales in the world. If we compare the levels that we find in the southern resident killer whales to what we would see, say, in human populations, we see about a 200-fold difference. In other words, southern resident killer whales are approximately 200 times more contaminated than the average human being on the planet. In the summer of 2000, Everett, or J-18, a 22-year-old male orca, died while in his prime and washed ashore, allowing researchers to determine what caused his death. And we'd been studying J-18 since virtually the day he was born. And I was uh, 
devastated when I heard that he was the whale that washed into Boundary Bay dead. And I was further devastated when I read his necropsy report and learned that he had a massive bacterial superinfection, he had no immune system response, and he had virtually no reproductive system ability. Uh, this was a whale that was in the prime of his life, a 22-year-old male that uh, uh, shouldn't have died so young. And it was due to a toxic load he was carrying. By itself, this toxic overloading is a major cause of concern, but couple it with a food shortage and you have a lethal combination. Chinook salmon, the main food source for the southern resident orcas, used to be plentiful here, but their numbers have been severely depleted, almost to extinction. This due primarily to the building of hydroelectric dams and the loss of habitat on the salmon's prime river runs and spawning grounds. Well, what's really insidious about all this is the double whammy that the whales are getting. When they don't have enough food supply, they have to live off their fat reserves, and their fat reserves are contaminated with toxins. Add to this ever-increasing impacts from the noise and exhaust of vessels from huge cargo ships, oil tankers, and cruise liners, to pleasure boaters and whale watchers, all of which only further complicates the orca's already precarious fight for survival. The southern resident orcas are giving us a wake-up call. Like canaries in a coal mine, they are showing us that something is seriously wrong and that we need to take action now before they disappear from these waters forever. But there is hope, for there are many things that we can do to help alleviate this crisis. Many toxic waste sites have been identified and are in urgent need of cleanup by state and federal agencies. And we need to ban the use of PCBs worldwide. In addition, we can eliminate the use of toxic pesticides, fertilizers, and cleaning products in and around our homes by using non-toxic alternatives. We can help the orcas and salmon recover by conserving the amount of electricity in the water we use, by installing energy-saving compact fluorescent bulbs in our light fixtures, and water-saving devices on our faucets, shower heads, and toilets. We need to support establishing protected areas for the orcas while asking the whale watching community, the general public, and governmental agencies to review and implement guidelines that minimize our impacts on them. We must support the restoration of salmon habitats, including the removal of destructive dam systems to allow salmon populations to replenish. And finally, we need to take action by getting involved with and supporting the organizations that are working hard to save the orcas. Time is of the essence, but by taking these actions now, we can ensure that the sun will continue to forever rise on these wondrous creatures. <laughs>